This paper is called Urban Heat Island in the Metropolitan Area of Barcelona, a multi-criteria evaluation for the construction of a vulnerability map. It was written by Denise Schneid, Julieta Kowal, and Gonzalo Piasek. The presentation will be organized in five different moments. First, we will discuss the context in which this paper was written. Then, we will present the objective and goals. Then, we will discuss the methodology. Then, we will present the results and findings. And finally, some of the contributions. We will start with the context. This paper is part of a work written within the framework of the research seminar of the Urban and Architecture Management and Valuation Master for the Architecture School of Barcelona from the Polytechnic University of Catalonia. The research seminar headed by Josep Roca and Blanca Arellano focuses on the resiliency of the cities towards climate change, and it is within a project that is called CLIMCAP. The two main concepts concerned in this project are urban heat island and vulnerability, and we will discuss them both. As we can see on the picture on the right, we can see a city and we can see temperatures during day and during night. And we can see that especially in the urban area, Temperatures at night are the highest. This doesn't happen on the greener areas of surrounding the city. The urban heat island happens when there is an increase of the temperatures in the downtown compared to the less urbanized peripheral and rural areas. The impact of heat waves is magnified by the formation of the thermal island in urban areas. We also know that one of the consequences of global warming is the increase of heat waves. And finally, the urban heat island effect describes the influence of urban surfaces on temperature behavior in contrast to surrounding areas. As of vulnerability, we know that being vulnerable implies a certain degree of fragility. We also know that the relation between the spatial and the social phenomenon has an influence in one way or another in the sensitivity of places and populations to climate change. It is known that climate change globalizes and radicalizes social inequalities. And finally, vulnerability includes an added element that refers to a disadvantaged social position and the risk that this situation entails. We are going to talk about four different groups of indicators, social demographic vulnerability, socioeconomic vulnerability, socio-urbanistic vulnerability, and vulnerability of the built environment. There are different ways, ways of approaching vulnerability, and these four are the most common ones. As of social demographic vulnerability, we know that age and sex matter and people adapt to, to climate in different ways. So by linking the characteristics of the population, such as poverty, age groups, minorities, disabled people or gender with social vulnerability, risks for people are intertwined as a result of their disadvantaged conditions. Then. Socially constructed vulnerability extends to contextual and regional power and gender relations. And then we have some work that suggests that people over 65 years of age and children under five years of age tend to have higher levels of economic dependence and high vulnerability. And finally, the repercussions of events related to climate change have different implications by sex. This is why on this work, we are going to focus especially on the most vulnerable groups. As for the socioeconomic vulnerability, we know that the socioeconomic vulnerability englobes the socioeconomic status such as income, political power, and prestige. Social vulnerability is linked to the condition of poverty and its conversion into a dominant social trait. And finally, vulnerability is directly related to income level 
because the population with economic deficiencies tends to live with greater social lags. So climate change is recognized as exacerbating poverty and inequalities, and poor people will be the most vulnerable to its impacts. This is why we are also going to focus on people with incomes less than 5,000 euros, since we will see afterwards. Then we have the socio-urbanistic vulnerability. There has been it has been demonstrated that the relationship between soil temperature and building intensity. This means that the urban heat island is higher in built up areas compared to non built ones, as we can see on the picture on the right. There are heat sources such as industrial states near urban centers, which also collect more temperature. And finally, it exists the possibility of using parks as a strategy to reduce the urban heat islands of cities. This is what we can also see on the picture on the right. Finally, the built environment vulnerability. We know that extreme phenomena intensified by climate change affect the territory unevenly, depending on the physical conditions of dwellings. And finally, the social composition and the deficiencies in the quality of the buildings are some of the characteristics that encompass vulnerability to this phenomenon. Now we will discuss the objectives and goals of this paper. The main objective of the article is to create a map of social vulnerability concerning the urban heat island in the metropolitan area of Barcelona, based on the use of a multi-criteria evaluation methodology. The goal is to explore the geospatial relationship between the urban heat island and the distribution of the most vulnerable population in the city of Barcelona. The aim is to obtain a georeferenced synthetic index of the vulnerability related to the island heat, which contemplates social demographic, socioeconomic, built environment, and the urban environment group of indicators in order to establish which areas present higher levels of vulnerability. This is the metropolitan area of Barcelona, which is made up of 36 municipalities where more than 3 million people live with 42.8% of the total population of all Catalonia. It is one of the most populated areas in Europe and 48% of the 636 square kilometers that make up this territory are is urbanized. We will now discuss the methodology of the work which is a multi-criteria evaluation in which we use different sources and different indicators, and then we build some sub-indexes and then a synthetic index. The first step was collecting the data and building our own database. This was especially difficult because we were working with many different sources and from 36 different municipalities. At the same time, we had to build our own shape file. We only wanted to focus on the urbanized area of each census tract. The second step was standardization of the indicator values. Since we were working with many different indicators and some were percentages and some others were numbers. Then we did the weighting based on some readings and on a panel of experts. We launched a small survey to our professors in the university and we asked them which of the indicators should have more weight in comparison to the others. And so we analyzed the results of the survey and we did some averages for each value. Then we recoded the variables into scales from 1 to 10. Then we constructed the sub-indexes by these aisles, grouping variables according to the literature. So this is why we had four different sub-indexes. Then we constructed a synthetic index of vulnerability to urban heat island. And the final step was georeferencing the results, putting into relation the values of the index with the built surface shape. 
These are the four groups of indicators, socio-demographic, socio-economic, socio-urbanistic, and of the built environment. Although you can see all these indicators, we actually had more than 42, but we ran some tests on SPSS program, and we found that some of them were more relevant than others. Next to each indicator, you can see either one, two, or three plus signs, and that is in relation to the results of the survey and the weighting of each indicator. In terms of the sociodemographic index, this includes indicators such as people over 65 years old, women over 65, boys and girls under five years of age, people from low-income countries, and foreign women. The second group of indicators, the socioeconomic index, includes people with incomes less than 5,000 euros, women with incomes less than 5,000 euros, illiterate people, illiterate women, and people with unemployment benefits. Then we have the socio-urbanistic group of indicators, which includes built area per habitant, industrial land use, and green canopy. And finally, the built environment group of indicators include dwellings built before 1951, dwellings with low quality energy certificates, EF and G, number of people by dwellings, and dwellings more than 45 square meters. The results of the work. This first map shows the distribution of the social demographic vulnerability sub-index. These are the ind indicators concerned in this sub-index. As we can see in the map, there are some darker red spots, especially in the Barcelona municipality, and also on the municipalities towards the north of River Besos. The second subindex is the socioeconomic vulnerability subindex, which includes all of these indicators as we saw before. This map is quite similar to the previous one, and we can see darker red census tracts, especially in downtown of the city, and then again in this area, which is the Vesos axis we just talked about. The third map is the socio-urbanistic vulnerability sub-index, and we can see that these are the indicators concerned in this sub-index. This map is not very clear, and the reason for this is that we are only working for with uh, the urbanized area of each census tract. So probably the green canopy is not being very clear as we can see all these white areas which are actually not urbanized. So this might be the reason why we don't see a big concentration of red spots, especially in downtown Barcelona. The fourth sub-index is the Built Environment Vulnerability sub-index, and these are the indicators included in this sub-index. We can see a big concentration of red areas here, and also in downtown Barcelona, and especially here, which is an industrial area. Before going to the synthetic sub-index, we would like to show you a map we did based on the temperatures on the highest temperature at night of 2018, where we can see in all of Catalonia, especially the metropolitan area of Barcelona being the darkest. This might suggest the urban heat island, of course. And on the left side, we can see temperatures going from up, from down to really hot, especially in downtown in the city. This is the final map on the left, which is the synthetic index of vulnerability towards the urban heat island. 
and on the right we have the hottest areas of the city so we can compare both of them on the left we can see that the darkest areas are again the north of the city the Besos axis and then again some parts of the municipality of Barcelona especially the oldest area which is Ciutat Vella these are some of the contributions of this work some of the difficulties or opportunities that we encountered first we would like to say you probably already know it but access to data is not always easy we were working with many official sources and we were working with more than just one municipality so it was not as easy as you might think to get all the information for each census tract then we would like to acknowledge multi-criteria methodologies as an added value for the study of vulnerability then we would like to say that to us data mapping is a really interesting tool since it can help us see how vulnerability is expressed in ter the territories and we used the metropolitan area of barcelona as an example then we would like to say that the study of urban spaces affected by climate change is something that we encourage and finally that some interventions can ease off some of the effects of the urban heat island so this kind of work to identify more vulnerable areas is very important so that then we can act on them finally we would like to say that we saw that the synthetic index is concentrated in barcelona city and its surroundings especially towards the north as we just saw then the higher temperatures are also more mostly concentrated in the same areas so if special especially vulnerable areas towards urban heat island are concentrated in the north of the city the Besos axis and the other parts of the city this means that higher temperatures do coincide with the most vulnerable ones so this is the first step we identified where the problem is so now we have to act on it to sum up we would like to show you what these areas look like on the left we have some of the Besos buildings that we were just talking about this is where we saw that there was a concentration of vulnerabilities and then on the right we have a picture of the old town of Barcelona which was also where we saw that there was a concentration of the synthetic index of vulnerability towards urban heat island thank you very much for listening and if you have any questions you can contact us over here